will pray this our one who will be accepted by him. Hallelujah, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the broken heart. He binds up their wounds. He casts the number of the stars and calls them all by their name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God with our hearts. He covers the havens with the clouds and prepares wings for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and human plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and pulls down ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
my reward just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win you. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some, I do it for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share the name of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will pray this canto for a song of faith by Fulcher. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By divine mercy, we have a new birth into a living. Christ.
from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue in Capernaum and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve him. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of the Lord. Mark's Gospel is one of the first Gospels written. It's the first to appear around 70 Common Era. Compared to the other Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew and Luke, Mark's writing is very straightforward. It's clear, straightforward, and without embellishment. It's sort of like Jesus went here, he said this, he healed this one. And then Jesus went here, he said this, and he healed that one, and so on and so on. There's no infancy narrative in Mark. The infancy narratives are only the ones we know of Jesus' birth come to us through Luke and Matthew. John's Gospel begins with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There's no infancy narrative in John's Gospel. Because John's Gospel was written by a very different perspective and appeared the last Gospel to appear. In the last few Sundays, we have been reading from the first chapter of Mark's Gospel. And in this rather short Gospel, what Mark does is tell us all we need to know about Jesus. It's not complete, though. It's as if Mark is giving us a synopsis, a preview of what Jesus is about in the rest of the Gospel. And it starts from the very first sentence. Mark chapter 1, verse 1 says, The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He tells us clearly in that one sentence that this is a Gospel, a good news account of Jesus Christ the Anointed One, the Son of God. In chapter 1, Mark gives us the preview of everything we need to know for the rest of his Gospel. He tells us that Jesus is the Son of God. He shows us that Jesus arrives at the baptism, John's baptism, and the heavens open and confirm who he is. He goes out alone into the wilderness and deals with temptation with Satan. He announces in the synagogue the impending reign of God that is coming. He chooses his first disciples. He shows his power over a demon. He goes off by himself to pray. He preaches. 
and he heals. That's all we need to know. The rest is detail. In Mark's Gospel, the reader always knows conclusively who Jesus is, the Son of God, and what Jesus is about, preaching and healing. The disciples, on the other hand, don't quite get it. Scripture scholars call this the messianic secret. But the reader knows from the beginning. And when the disciples get it, when they confess Jesus as the Son of God, he immediately tells them to be quiet and do not tell anyone else, which, of course, they never do. And in today's Gospel, we have that beautiful line, Jesus got up while it was still very dark and went off to a deserted place alone to pray. This is one of many times in Mark's Gospel where Jesus goes by himself and finds a place to pray, a place to refresh and refuel himself for the ministry that he's doing, to spend time in prayer to his Father. Believe it or not, a week from this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, February 17th, the beginning of the Lenten season, our 40-day journey to the high holy days of our faith. Today I'd like to invite you to begin now thinking about these 40 days. How do you want to spend your Lenten journey this year? The three practices our church gives us are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. As Jesus went off by himself in today's gospel to pray, perhaps you can begin thinking about what prayer practice you might want to do during this Lenten season. Perhaps it's praying morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer, Perhaps it's meditating. Perhaps it's reading scriptures prayerfully. And many other prayer practices. As many of you know, we have a centering prayer group here at Holy Trinity that meets currently via Zoom every Wednesday evening at 6.30. A group of about 8 to 10 of us, maybe more sometime, gather to support each other in our prayer practice and to pray silently together. Let may be a time where you want to experience prayer like that. You know, I've said this so many times, but it truly has been a strange and mysterious year with the pandemic and the social unrest. We need a retreat more than ever. I invite you to begin thinking about your own Lenten journey this year. Spend time quietly reflecting. See what rises up in your heart and soul. Like Jesus, spend some quiet time and let God speak to you. Listen. Because I believe that this Easter, when we get to that point, when the stone will roll away and the brilliant sunlight floods the darkness of the tomb, we will have a celebration that will raise the roof with alleluias, that will raise our voices in jubilant song, and all of life will rejoice in the resurrection.
prayer for spiritual communion together. In the union of us with Jesus, with the faithful gathered in every altar of your church, where his blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering Christ's own trial and passion, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, the redemption won for us by your life. Bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of 